the rugged peaks of western Serbia do not easily surrender their secrets. Thick forests and mountains honeycombed with caves are shielding men wanted for some of the worst crimes against humanity in 50 years. Two of Europe's most wanted men, both senior Serbian indicted war criminals, are believed to be hiding in these mountains with deep local support. A fruitless international hunt is simply making them national heroes, and while the world focuses on bringing top leaders to justice, hundreds, possibly thousands of Serbians and others are literally getting away with murder. Troops from the world's most powerful armed alliance, NATO, scour these valleys that slice through the frontiers of Bosnia, Serbia and Montenegro, and they find nothing. Tonight, the UN admits serious mistakes in the search for war criminals, as many fear justice denied here is sowing the seeds of future conflict. Kadar Hotic is looking for her son. She hasn't seen him since they were separated nine years ago on the outskirts of Srebrenica. Srebrenica had been a UN protected zone for thousands of Muslim refugees fleeing Serb attacks. On July the 11th, 1995, besieged Dutch UN troops started withdrawing. More than 7,000 Muslim men and boys were then slaughtered by Serb paramilitaries. Kadar has found and reburied her husband. Now she's looking for the one thing that could help her identify the body of her son. It's not easy. The earth hugs these victims. This is one of many secondary graves where hundreds of bodies have been deliberately broken up and reburied in a desperate bid by the killers to hide the evidence. Right ankle. Okay. UN workers like Shana Daly painstakingly seek identity. Most of the bodies are in body parts, disarticulated bones mixed together. Yeah, so we're just actually trying to sort out which elements go with which body and try to take out as complete bodies as possible. Humor is going further down. It prolongs Kadar's pain, yet each new grave offers her grim hope of finding her son. <laughs> Kadar's not alone in this heart-wrenching search. She's joined by Munira Subacic, another Bosnian Muslim mother looking for the body of her own son. Several Serb leaders have been arrested for the Srebrenica slaughter, but many more killers have escaped. Nine years after one of Europe's most notorious modern massacres, justice eludes its victims. I feel that I'm not going to be able to do it. 
Jer zločinci koji su počinili zločin, zločinci koji su organizovali zločin, još su uvijek slobodni, još uvijek šetaju, još uvijek se ponose sa zločinom koji su oni učinili. Munira and Kadar were born in Srebrenica. Their homes are now occupied by Serbs, some of whom they say took part in the killing. Koji su izvršili zločine, oni su danas slobodni, šetaju sa ovim gradom ovdje. Ovo je moj grad, jer svi ljudi i oni koji nisu radili zločine, podržavali su zločinice i danas je kriju. Znaju gdje se nalaze grobnice ovdje, traže na jedna grobnica da se otkopa. Oni znaju gdje su, neće da kažu, znači još uvijek kriju zločine. Nemali svi zločinice. The man who led the military action against the Srebrenica Muslims, Serbian General Ratko Mladic, is wanted in The Hague for war crimes. But he's on the run, hiding in Serbia. The information uh, we receive uh, and we are receiving now is that uh, he's almost protected by a former um, army uh, personalities and even from some of the police structure. The International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia is now in session. One of those The Hague does have in custody is former Serbian President Slobodan Milosevic. But prosecutors are increasingly uncertain they can prove his responsibility for the most serious charge, genocide, and of the 35 Serbs, Croats and Bosnians already convicted here for war crimes, many are at large in the Balkans, protected by their supporters. We have now 22 accused at large and 15 of them are most probably in Serbia. So um, our, uh, our we, we are still we are still trying to obtain uh, cooperation with Belgrade, but uh, the government is not not really acting in that direction. Isn't it, uh the Hague Tribunal was set up to punish only top political and paramilitary leaders, and Chief Prosecutor Carla Del Ponte admits that their list was cut back. We have a lot of people who are suspects, who are perpetrators, who are the executors of crimes that we cannot touch, we cannot consider. And Ms Del Ponte is dealing with a new problem. Under US pressure, the tribunal is winding down. There will be no new investigations after the end of this year. The pursuit of an estimated 20,000 war criminals will now rely on the slow justice of weak local courts in each Balkans country. In Serbia's capital, Belgrade, peace now reigns, but there's little will to chase thousands of war criminals. The government even refuses to hand over top generals wanted by The Hague. Serbs instead assert they are a unique people surrounded by hostile forces. For centuries, these Orthodox Christians have seen themselves as Europe's frontline defenders against Islam. More recently, many believe Yugoslavia was broken up by a Western conspiracy, and Serbs who fought are national heroes. We have uh, a situation in which politicians are not ready uh, to look at the past uh, because the uh, majority of them, uh, um, um, they agree with, uh, with Milosevic. Natasha Kovac is Serbia's leading human rights lawyer. 
As The Hague winds down, she's one of the few now expected to pursue war criminals who still hold power in the government, the police and the army. Many individuals uh, who are very active uh, in uh, uh, times of uh, war and who are mentioned uh, by many indictments as uh, members of, uh, uh, of um, some groups, uh, uh, commanders uh, who are involved in crimes that are in the power in institution. Still today? Still today. A Serb chasing Serb war criminals runs risks. Protecting witnesses is almost as hard as protecting herself. I saw in my life many deaths, many people in a very horrible situation and uh, it's normal life for the human rights defenders. Today, Natasha attends the trial of 17 Serbs accused of murdering 200 Croats. It's meant to be a showcase of Serbia's ability to try its own. I believe this time that uh, justice uh, will be reached. Uh, but this is the exception, not the rule. For Natasha, nothing short of a national catharsis will remove known criminals from power and land them in court. And without trying them, uh, they will uh, stay in institution. And it means that with them, uh, every society, including Serbia, doesn't have uh, any chance uh, you know, to open issue of uh, responsibility for what we did in the past. The failure of national justice is clearest in the fertile valleys of western Serbia, especially here in the town of Priboy. Many Muslims were attacked here and local leaders say those responsible are well known. On the morning of October 22, 1992, a bus taking men to work was stopped here by Serb paramilitaries. U Milču je zaustavljen autobus, pregledane su lične karte i svi muslimani koji su imali karte sa imenima muslimana izvedeni su iz autobusa. 17 muslims were taken away. Sakiba's brother-in-law was among them. She was pregnant at the time. Ja živim 12 godina u porodici gde svako jutro... Gledate plač majke koja je izgubila sina, muža koji je izgubio brata, a pored svega toga ja vučem posladice, moja čerka je rođena sa srčanom manom. Most of the men came from here, Severin, for four centuries a Muslim village. Zineta's husband, Medo, was among those taken away. Proud of their work, the kidnappers took photographs of what happened next. That's your husband? Yes. In the lobby of a hotel, while some guests looked on, the 17 were brutally beaten, tortured and one by one murdered. Their bodies are yet to be found. I don't know what to do with the people, but I feel like I'm angry. In the human being, in the human being. What can a man do with a human being that he couldn't do with a human being? There was a trial in Belgrade for this crime, one of the few, but it was a whitewash. Just two of the 12 kidnappers are in jail. Most have never been charged. Why do you think that these guys can't be found or arrested? Who's protecting them? 
zato što ih štiti njihov narod. I u interesu im da ih sačuvaju, da prođe sve ove procedure suske i to da bi opet im došli na vlast. Most disturbing of all about this case is the fate of the ringleaders. Sentenced in absentia in a Belgrade court to 20 years jail, they live freely here, just across the border in the Serbian part of neighbouring Bosnia. If they can live so openly here, then little wonder this area is the favoured haunt of the most wanted. Radovan Karadic was the Bosnian Serb political leader. He's been indicted in The Hague for war crimes and is today on the run. Many believe he's hiding in this mountainous border area between Bosnia and Serbia, slipping across frontiers whenever the heat is on. But he's not alone. This guy is not some lone romantic hero wandering over the hills of Bosnia. He's the head of a criminal network which raises money for his protection through trafficking women, trafficking drugs. So we're hitting the network now. Arguably, Evan, we should have done that earlier. We should have done it seven years ago instead of last year. Paddy Ashdown is the UN's high representative in Bosnia. A former head of the Liberal Democrats in Britain, he's been committed to helping this region find peace. But as an ex-Special Forces soldier, he he knows the difficulty of finding one man. You've been there, you know what it's like. One of the wildest mountain fastnesses in the whole of Eastern Europe. In this country, Tito hid 7,000 partisans from six German divisions and they couldn't catch him. So catching a single individual in wild country like this, who is amongst people who regrettably still regard him as a hero, is a very tough military task. But in The Hague, key officials also blame NATO. One of the problems is sharing information in time. And uh, sometimes the structures are so bureaucratic that uh, it, it's not working or it's, it's always too late when they put in place an operation to, to, to locate garage or to arrest garage. In this part of the Bosnian border with Serbia, Karadic is not just a hero, but the latest in a line of Serb nationalist fighters, even emblazoned on their T-shirts. If they know where Karadic is, they certainly aren't about to tell me or anyone else. Harakiri, you punish. You kill yourself. You'd rather kill yourself and tell me. Fair enough. Don't do that. This barbecue is to raise funds for a new statue to a World War II Serbian nationalist killed by Tito's communists. But already Mladic and Karadic are seen to be the same status. Same status. But he's the same status. As the brandy fuels spontaneous song, the names of past heroes are replaced by a new one, Radovan. Bosnian Serbs can be expected to support Karadic, but the network is far wider, stretching back across the border to the Serbian capital, Belgrade. The US and Europe are threatening Serbia with economic sanctions unless the military and security services stop protecting war criminals. Up until recently, very recently, the last four or five months, these guys have remained free because there was direct collusion to protect them and to prevent them being caught from the authorities in the intelligence services, in the army, and in the government. In Republika Srpska, on the Bosnia and Herzegovina side of the border, and in Belgrade. There is no doubt about that. They could not have remained free this long without that being the case. Lord Ashdown says he sees signs of change in Belgrade and elements of the Serbian military may at some point 
be willing to hand over the wanted if, as promised, that clears the way to join NATO. But Serbian leaders risk a voter backlash if they hand over wanted war criminals. If you're saying to me, that's all words, then you're right. Uh, unless this is translated into action, and concrete action is these guys at The Hague, it ain't going to matter. While there is no action, and with The Hague Tribunal under pressure to wind up, the two main fugitives, Radovan Karadic and General Ratko Mladic, are hoping to hold out and even get away with it. Well, you're absolutely right. The famous uh, Karadzic phrase is držati, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. And that's the message he's given to the Serbs. I don't think it would be possible for uh, the Hague Tribunal to close down unless they're caught. Uh, the fact that there is a deadline for the Hague Tribunal means that we have well, there's a deadline effectively for catching these guys. Promises of future justice mean little here in Srebrenica. Revisiting the UN base where they lost their loved ones, Munira and Kadar want to confront the killers in court in their own country. The Hague Tribunal has not been enough. After the Second World War, we covered up everything what's happened. And the people in this region think that everything will repeat, that crimes will be covered, and once in 50 years again, the war will start again. Just three months ago, Munira found and reburied the remains of her husband, but her work is not done. Just 1,500 of the thousands they believe were killed in Srebrenica have been reburied at this new cemetery. One day, it's where Munira and Kadar hope to lay their own sons. The world denied these people protection when they lived. In death, will their relatives be denied proper justice? Yeah. 